What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Inkscape tutorial. So in this video, we're gonna continue our start to finish workflow on creating a rendering from a SketchUp model that we've downloaded from the 3D warehouse. I will link to the other videos in this playlist in the notes down below so that you can follow along if you wanna start from the beginning. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so if you remember what we did in the last video, we came in here and we used Inkscape proxies inside of SketchUp in order to generate realistic furniture inside of this model. We've also gone through and we've adjusted some things on the uh, materials and stuff like that. But part of the problem with this current rendering is the background. So if you take a look at the background right now, and uh, we could go ahead and adjust the time of day if we wanted to, to get different sunlight and things like that. That creates kind of a cool look. The problem with this right now though, is that it um, it's not very realistic because there's nothing outside this window. So there's no like, like uh, buildings or grass or anything like that. It just kind of looks like you're in this big like void space. So if I was to fly out here, like there's nothing out here. So that doesn't look very realistic because that's not how the real world works, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna take a look at a couple different background options before I kind of show you the one that I've settled on. So um, there's a few different options in here and I will see if I can get these both to show up on the same screen. Um, if not, I may have to do some kind of like split screen thing. But um, what we're gonna do first of all is we're gonna look at some of the built-in options inside of Inkscape. So inside of Inkscape, there are options in here under atmosphere for different horizons and backgrounds and things like that. So like for example, if I wanted a little bit more realism, I could go into my presets and I could select like a forest or something like that. And you can see how this forest, this is a 360 degree image that you can show behind this office. So that actually fits in here pretty good. Um, assuming that this actually like backed up to an open space or something like that. There's also some options in here. There's a mountains option as well as an option. I, I don't generally use the construction site one, but there's a construction site option as well. And then there's also options for like the town. And so probably in this particular situation, you would most likely be using either the town or the urban setting, one of those, um, in order to create your background. So if you wanted to add to your background like this, you could definitely just use those presets. And I think that gives us a pretty cool image. And that may be something that I kind of take a look at and render just to have the image in here. Um, I've actually decided to download my own HDRI file and bring that in. And so that's one of the powerful things about Inkscape is it allows you to bring in your own HDRI backgrounds into your model. And so the way that you do that is you just click on the button for load skybox from file and then you find that HDR file. And so for me, what I've done is I've downloaded an HDR file from the website HDRI Haven. So I'm a big fan of the HDR Haven website. It's completely like fan supported on Patreon and they have a ton of different HDRIs that you can download um, and use in your models. And in this case, I wanted to try something a little bit different. So under the urban options, if you scroll down and actually you can do a search, I actually wanted to try to do kind of a night render. And so in order to do a night render, there's actually a Shanghai night file that you can download. You can see how this gives you a 360 um, or, or a panoramic view of Shanghai and the skyline there. And I thought that that might give us kind of a cool image in the background. And so what I did is I downloaded this file and what I wanna show you actually is I'm gonna download um, several different resolutions of this file. And I wanna take a look at what, what the difference in the background is when I do that. And so what I wanna take a quick look at is I want you to understand the difference between the different resolutions of these HDR files. Cause you can see how you get this option in here to download a bunch of different files in order to use in the background. And they're all different sizes and uh, it's kind of hard to know which one is which. So what I've done is I've downloaded the 1K, the 4K and the 8K. And uh, I'm gonna bring those into Inkscape and we can kind of take a look at the difference so that you understand kind of what that's gonna do do. So to start off, let's go back into Inkscape and I will show you how to load those HDRI files in. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this across and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on this little folder under atmosphere in order to load in those files. 
And so one thing I would recommend when you do that is you ought to have a folder set up for all your different HDRI files just so that you have that. Um, mine's on an external drive, which isn't always the best way to do that. Um, but um, because I'm moving computers and stuff a lot, I have those in there as their own file. But I would recommend having a file for all your HDR your HDR files um, so that you can find them really quickly and really easily. But whenever you do this, um, once you've downloaded those HDR files, you can double click on those in order to bring those in. And what I wanna point out is, let's go ahead and fly outside this building just for a second. And we can kind of take a look at this background. And we'll talk about all the lighting and stuff in a second. But what I really wanna point out is the resolution of this image in the background. So right now, this is the 1K option and that's being brought in and you can rotate this just like you can um, the presets in the background but you can see how it's really blurry and fuzzy and so that's probably the biggest difference between the different HDRI types is just how blurry and fuzzy they are so now let's go ahead and bring in the 4k So what you're gonna notice about this is this is gonna take a little while longer to load, but when it loads in, you can see how all of a sudden, first of all, when I rotate around, you can see how there's a lot more light data in here. So when I rotate around in Inkscape, this is just, uh, it's kind of trying to deal with the different light sources contained inside this HDRI file. So it's kind of flashing and looking a little bit weird right now. So you can see how as I do this, um, it's flashing, but you're also gonna notice that this is a much more clear clear image. So the higher the resolution, the clearer this is going to be. So I mean, I would recommend at least like with the 4K, this looks fairly realistic, where with the 1K, it looked really fuzzy and it wasn't really a very good, um, it wasn't really a very good image that it was showing. And so now let's take a look at the 8K. So the 8K is going to be double the resolution of this one. So when I double click this, you're going to notice this one's going to take even longer to load in. But then when it does, it's going to swap out in the background and you can see how my computer's thinking a little bit. Um, but it's going to swap out in the background and you can see how where before between the 1K and the 4K, there was a huge substantial difference. Now when we get up to the 8K, there's less of a difference in here. So I would say if you can find that kind of sweet spot between this being realistic and um, also not having too big of an image file in there, that's kind of the balance that you're looking for. So I would say the 4K or the 8K would work fine for what we're trying to do right here. And so the nice thing about this image is it's supplying lighting data based on those buildings and other things like that inside of your model. Um, so, and you can adjust the rotation in here in order to see kind of what the background is gonna look like, you can kind of turn this rotation right here. But one thing you're gonna notice is there's there's an option in here for use brightest point as sun direction. And that's great for, an, um, for a render where you're doing a day scene because you want the sunlight to kind of sync up with your HDRI file. The problem is this is a nighttime scene. And so what this is doing is this is applying this HDRI file in the background, but it's also, casting shadows using the Inkscape sun. Well, in a nighttime scene, the Inkscape sun wouldn't be casting shadows or light because the sun is down. And so what you want to do in this case to get rid of those additional shadows that don't really make any sense is you want to go into your sky orb setting and you want to turn your sun brightness down to zero. So you can see how when I turn my sun brightness down to zero, all of a sudden now this HDRI file is now casting the lighting in here. So when I adjust this, you can see how I'm getting lighting bouncing off of my surfaces and everything else using this image, where before um, it was kind of casting things with the sun and making things look kind of weird. And so what we want is we want this image to be sitting in the background and we want it to be kind of providing light um, in order to um, in order to kind of light up the inside of our scene. And so you can adjust the rotation of this until you get kind of a view that you like. So obviously you can tell that depending on what you want in the background, you can do different things with the rotation in here. I kind of like having those buildings kind of sitting out in the background like this. So you do have to be a little bit careful um, because there's people in this image and also a ground right outside of this. You need to make sure that this kind of looks uh, that the perspective kind of lines up. I think we're in pretty good shape right here. 
And so one thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you check the button for normalize brightness in here. That's gonna take the brightness of your HDRI image and make it adjustable. And so then what you can do is you can take this image and you can use this slider to adjust the brightness of this image to whatever you want it to be. So obviously something like this is gonna be way too bright. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this down until this looks a little bit more realistic. So I don't want this to look all blown out and super bright back there so I'm gonna bring this down a little bit just to make sure this looks kind of the way that we want it to look so you can see how as I adjust this down the light coming off of that HDRI file is gonna be a lot dimmer than if we adjust it up and so the last thing you could do because we're not really getting a ton of light in here we're gonna add some artificial lights in the next um, piece of this series but one thing you could do if you want this to be a little bit brighter just with kind of the stock lighting and the HDRI is you could come in here and you could adjust the night sky brightness up you can see how as I adjust the night sky brightness up that means I'm getting more light cast into this space um, based on that night sky so it's not necessarily bringing lighting in from the HDRI file um, as much as the like overall environment is casting some light as well so so depending on how you want this to look, you can adjust that kind of ambient night sky brightness that's going on in the background just so you can see things a little bit better inside of this rendering. And so the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and let's go ahead and run a test render just to see how it looks. Um, I don't think it's gonna look super good without lighting in here, but I'd love to take a look and kind of see. So we're just gonna take this and we're just gonna run that render. And somehow my, there we go. And so I'm just gonna go find that file that was created. And so when I open that scene up, you can see how we have a pretty decent rendering in here um, with this background in here. So it's a little dim. We're definitely gonna add some lighting in here and uh, we'll probably adjust that HDRI file as we go. But overall for a night render without us adding any artificial lighting other than this uh, file in the background, I think this looks pretty good. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me let me know what you thought. What do you think about this workflow? Is there something that I'm missing in here? There probably is, feel free to let me know. But um, what do you think about Enscape? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.